Well, hey everybody, and welcome to the Animal Donut Channel. My name is Jeff Luke. I'm a professional photographer and the author of Stock Market Intelligence. And I've created this channel to help you to understand some powerful investment ideas and to help you with your investing education. And I feel that understanding a creative and focused approach can really help you to become more properly educated when it comes to understanding stocks and investment. Now, earlier in this week, I made a video and it was about Charlie Munger and a talk he gave to a classroom of business students. And I think I did a, a really a great job of summarizing it, but I didn't know when I made the video what his true message really was. And so I've been thinking about it for a few days and I thought, instead of just putting that out there, and letting people sort of see me recount what he talked about, wouldn't it be better and more useful to you guys if I were to create a take-home message, like the summary of what the meat of that talk was about? And it finally kind of came to me, but I have to say it took me about four or five days of just thinking about it and asking myself what was Charlie really saying to come to where I am today where I can share with you um, the most useful part of this investing education that Mr. Munger shared with us. So, um, what he, just to, to give you an overview, he said that you know, there are a lot of high IQ people in the world of finance and investing. In fact, he can't think of another you know, activity that attracts so many people. And a lot of really intelligent people come from like Harvard and Wharton and other business schools and they get hired up by these investment advisory companies, investment advisory firms, hedge funds. And um, these companies are all competing against one another for clients. So they're always trying to come up with a better strategy or a better algorithm, a better approach so that they can, you know, get business and uh, outcompete. And so he said one of these investment advisory firms in his town came up with this idea. What they do, because they had a, you know, a whole bunch, let's say they had about 50 or 75 different analysts, specialists in investing and analyzing companies. So what they said is each one of you guys give us your best investing idea. And what they plan to do is take all of these different ideas and combine them together and create a formula or an algorithm that they could run that would then tell them which stocks to buy. So they tried this and it failed miserably. And then they tried it again and it failed. And then they tried it again and it just failed utterly. And so Charlie Munger in this video said, can anybody in this room tell me why this failed? And the room was silent. And Charlie was like in disbelief. He was just standing there with all these really intelligent business school students and nobody could say why this didn't work. And Charlie said, you know, it just shows, it proves how hard it is to be rational because the answer is really simple, yet everybody was, was at a loss for a simple, rational explanation. And the reason was they tried too many things. These investment companies had all of these analysts and they were all picking stocks and they got like 50, 75, maybe 100 different stocks and they bought them all and they failed to beat the average. And the reason for this is because they became the average. You know, once you own 50 or 100 or 200 or 500 stocks, your performance is going to pretty much look like the market because you become the market. So Charlie then said, at Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett is more successful. He's beaten the averages over a long period of time, not just five or 10 or 20 years, but over 30 years and more. And he said the reason for his success is that he's only tried to understand one or two stocks at a time. He's tried to do less. And Charlie said, if you ask Warren Buffett on any given year what his best stock was, he could tell you his best stock or one or two companies, one or two stocks that he thought were the best investments. But he wasn't going to give you five or six or seven. He just didn't have that many. And this is just a, such a powerful tool because we're in a world where we make these watch lists and we create portfolios. And I mean, I see other 
other people with portfolios of 20, 30, 40, 50 stocks in them. And they try to get exposure to all of these different things, but they don't understand that when you take all of the stocks in aggregate, since they're all widely diversified across such a huge field, their performance is probably the same as the S&P 500 or the total stock market index. And that's fine if you want a diversified portfolio, but that does not work if you want to do better than the average. So the take home message that took me a few days is don't diversify too much. And that's pretty much what I said, but you don't want to own too much if you're trying to do better than average because that's when you become average. And that's why these investment advisory firms that charge you know, two and 20 or charge 1% or 1.5% to manage money, they wind up doing worse. I believe the stat is more than 80%, almost 85 to 90% of professional money managers fail to beat the market. And the reason is because after their expenses and after their fees, they cost the investors so much that they underperform. So most investors would be, do much better just owning a diversified index at a much lower cost. But don't diversify, don't diversify too much to the point where you're investing in stocks that you don't understand well. And I think that was the other point about this experiment with the uh, investment advisory firms is they were forcing people to come up with a stock or two, but these were just uh, stocks that people maybe in investigated or researched for this job requirement. But it wasn't anything that they truly stuck with and studied for a long period of time. My guess would be that Warren Buffett spends at least three to five years or more learning about a business and building his understanding of it before he actually goes and makes a big investment in it. And so um, for other investors who are trying to emulate that success, then the approach would be to only stick to a few things you understand well. So I hope this has been useful to you. I really enjoyed thinking and sharing with you the take home message of Charlie's talk. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, please give a like to this video so other people in the YouTube algorithm will know uh, that you watched it, that you enjoyed it, and also consider subscribing to the channel. That way you'll get more videos like this when I make them. I really appreciate you watching the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.